Bibles um, to 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. Before I read, there is a thanksgiving. I would like to thank you for the time I've been with you. I've been transferred back to Gweru with effect from January, Sister Manyushi. Um, it said that she is going. She has been a good support in the ministry and the whole family. We will be praying for you and we hope will be transferred back again <laughs> right the bible says for a mindful of the sincere faith within you and i want to be sure my sound is good before i proceed is my sound okay it's good maybe i can get a mic that is not cutting The Bible says, um, Second Timothy chapter one verse five: For I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. Let us pray. Our heavenly Father, we thank you this evening again for coming as mortal beings, Father, with a spiritual experience and with a lively hope that we shall meet with you one of these days and our bodies shall be changed and father here we are in service believing that something supernatural will be imparted in us as we are speaking with you lord father in this divine conference may you answer all the needs of your children and may you pardon them of their sins may you cleanse them in the high soap in the blood of the lord jesus christ father equip us and uh, fill us with the holy spirit give us a higher way lord father of living and pleasing you and working with you like enoch did we commit this service into your hands in jesus name amen we may be seated here we see that the faith that we see in timothy was stressed back to the grandmother lois and to the mother eunice let me get a mic that right it was traced back to the grandmother and to the mother also we see an impartation of good genetic traits good spiritual traits my subject today is our spiritual genetics and heredity so in the spiritual we inherit a lot from our spiritual genes from our heavenly father from our bountiful father like in the natural we inherit a lot from our earthly parents so we want to see how these genetics affect our mannerism and behaviorism and who we shall be because before there was anything of you oh god saw your matter he says to jeremiah i saw you before you were in the mother's womb even to isaiah he sanctified him when he was in the mother's womb even john the baptist received the holy Ghost in the mother's womb there is a spiritual genetics that links us to our father so we are what we are by heredity we inherited the looks that we have from our fathers from the mother's side and from the father's side also in the spiritual we have the mother's side which is the word of god and the father's side which is the spirit of god there is the mechanic side and the dynamic side we should have both sides meshed together to make us who we are now it says whosoever um i want everyone to get the message so i will try to uh, if i can get uh, it the message because sometimes i lose the whole message if the sound cuts maybe what we can do if the people can hear me fine here i can 
release this mic and continue with this one. And let me forget, to forget this mic and I continue with this one. Uh, will you be hearing me fine there? Good. Right. Um, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin because the seed of God remains in him. He cannot sin because he is born of God. Now the Bible is saying if you are born of God, there is a seed of God in you. There is a nature of God that controls your behavior. There is a nature of God that encodes your behavior, your dressing, your attitude. Who you are, it comes from the seed inside. If you have a wrong seed, you cannot behave right. If you have a supernatural seed of God, then you are of a special kind. You are one in a million. You are a child of God because you are born of God and you cannot sin because there is a nature that loves God. There is something that connects with God. The Bible says, whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. Now, you are born to be an overcomer because of the DNA and the nature of God. He is the mighty conqueror and all his children are overcomers. You are not to be overcome by sin, but you crush all sin. You crush all powers of the enemy. You vanquish every fall because you have the spiritual DNA of God. There is something imparted on you without that inward nature, without those inward genetics, you struggle in Christianity and you get tired because you have no inner power to act the outward actions but now if you have the dna of god you are you become what you are born to be now if you were if you were there in his attributes as a son of god you don't remember it but you are part of him you are part of the word when the word was written when christ was dying at the cross when he was on the cross i was on his mind we were part of the thoughts of God and you cannot deny the word because you are part of the word. You, something in you connects with God like in the Chinese laundry ticket. They would have one part and the other part connecting together because they were together before. So you were in the mind of God. So the genes are control all activities of the body. They make you tall, they make you light, they make you um, maybe be well built or what because of the genetics of your parents. So in the supernatural also is the same. Now, every cell has the genetic material that encodes for its activity. Now when the Bible starts, it starts with the genesis, which is the genes or the seed chapter. Everything you will see throughout the Bible starts from the genes of Genesis. It starts from when you see uh, people maybe who live and walk with God. It started when Enoch was working with God, when Adam was working with God, when Noah was working with God. When you see people who deviate and fall in sin, it started in Genesis. When you see those who go into polygamy and things, it started in Genesis. When you, get, when you see those who repent and make right, it started in Genesis. No matter what happens to you, if you have the gene of God, no matter what mistake you have done in your life, something calls back to God. Because there's a deep calling to the deep. The seed of Abraham, we trace it. We want to trace our spiritual genes, where we came from, and we find that we came from God, and we go back to God. Now to Abraham and this seed where the promise is made. And we are the seed of Abraham. He did not say seeds as if there were many, but he said seed, which is in Jesus Christ. So we, by Jesus Christ, by a new birth, by the Holy Ghost baptism, we have a, a transfer of the genes and we become part the seed of Abraham. So all Abraham's blessings are ours. And thy seed shall possess the gates of the enemy. So if you are part of the seed of Abraham by genetics, spiritual genetics, you possess the gates of the enemy. Whether that enemy is sickness, you overcome it. Whether that enemy is poverty or any power of the devil, whether it's sin, you live above sin because you are living in heavenly places with Christ. Now even Zeresh, the wife of Haman, had to admit that if Mordecai is of the seed of the Jews, before whom you have begun to fall, you shall not prevail again because you shall fall. Even they were admitting among each other, even demons know that you are an untouchable somebody. You are a royal priesthood. You are a super race. 
you are a peculiar energy because God is in, is in you and greater is he that is within you than the one that is in the world and no weapon formed against thee shall prosper and every tongue that rises against you in judgment thou shalt condemn and now this is the heritage of the servants of God this is our heritage you are unconquerable as a child of God your inheritance is not inheriting diabetes or, or BP or sugar or temper because there are some who have inherited temper from their parents some have inherited diseases from their parents some have inherited stinginess the whole family is stingy there are traits that run in families you find another family is a very strict family and the one family can be a very compromising family the other family all of them want hard things hard messages hard preaching it's a genetic thing it is not supernatural unless if it's about the holy spirit now our inheritance we have inheritance through sonship we are possessors of all things because of genetics that we have we are going to do a dna test a word test to see where you belong because in the whole bible and throughout all human history there's only two types of dna it has nothing to do with races but it's two seeds that are fighting each other i'll put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed so in the world there's only two sets of spiritual dna is the serpent seed and the seed of god so your nature and your behavior what you like and your appetites and what you spend time on shows which seed you are in if you spend thing, time on dead things on vulgar things on fleshly things on sensual things you are in the sight of the serpent unless if you are a deceived child of god that needs to repent and come back to god and be cleansed and be washed and come back to your alignment because there cannot be any mutation of your spiritual gene if you are a child of god you are a child of god forever so what makes us who we are is already in us your enemy is inside some of your desires are because of an inbred nature christians fight daily the natural traits that they were given by their natural fathers using the spiritual traits they were given by their spiritual father so these two are contrary to one another now by our natural fathers we inherited things that we reject when they are wrong and we accept when they are good i was stressing now when i was showing you from the history there the family of jonathan edwards uh, it was the whole family trust about 1000 people uh, followed over generations they were successful people while well, one became a, a, a vice president in us the other one became dean of the law the other one became dean of medical school the other one became three became senators three governors three college presidents 30 were judges 60 were doctors 65 were professors in one family trade trend a family tree a 75 were military officers eight were public office holders 100 were lawyers 100 were catchmen 285 were college graduates following one family in genetics then in max jukes on the dark side 300 of that family died prematurely 440 were physically wrecked uh, by addiction to alcohol and 310 were paupers and 160 were convicts 190 were prostitutes 60 were thieves seven were murderers so some family will have a, a, a deadly genetic trend and don't worry about your family if you diagnose that we're going to deal with it today you can escape it today there are some families followed by divorce some family followed by poverty even if they are graduates but there are some families that are followed by heavenly places through and through when you kill sin you kill the very attributes that follow it so it may not be that you have sinned but the witness of your parents and your parents parents sin is hereditary i mean sickness is hereditary in many cases and through each generation it gets weaker and weaker now that's why even when doctors 
are attacking you, they are taking medical history, they will ask that, did, is anyone from your family having BP? Uh, is it there in your family that someone has asthma? This is the family history. So today I'm taking the family history so that we can admit you and heal and break the cycle, break the family cases, break the covenants that were made. Because it started somewhere, it must end somewhere. The scientists were watching um, about the blood of Jesus Christ when they discovered the Ark of the Covenant. They said when Christ was pierced by the Roman spear then, the blood went um, and the, when the earthquake uh, shook the earth and it rent the rocks, it created a crack that made the blood go under in the Calvary grotto there where the Ark of the Covenant was hidden and Christ confirmed a blood covenant, a DNA covenant with the many nations, with you and me. Under the blood of Jesus Christ, you are untouchable by trends of your family, by evil generational traits. Now, the Bible says, they show the work of the Lord written in their hearts, in their conscience bearing witness, in their thoughts accusing or excusing one another. So the law of God is now written in us because DNA is a mysterious written language of what you shall be. DNA is even in plants and in animals. Now, if you take a banana seed with its genetics and you put it among a million members, a mangoes, it will never have peer pressure. Even if mangoes will bear mangoes, the banana will say, my genetics are different. I'm one in a million. It will say proudly banana. If you go somewhere where there are no believers, be proudly a believer. Don't be conformed to the things of the world. You cannot sin, you cannot be like them because what operates them is not in you. And what operates you is not in them. Now, we have the DNA of Jesus Christ. By the blood transfusion of Calvary, it's no longer us who live, but Christ who lives in us. Now, we, here we are, we have become from mortal beings, from time beings, to eternal beings. When the word of God did lead our souls, we become sons and daughters of God with attributes and the gene of God in us and uh, to be sons and daughters of God and, and crying Abba Father we have not received the spirit of bondage and to fear through our natural fathers we also got some bondage although we got good things also but we were in bondage there are some family members who are always suspicious they are always living in fear there are some family members who cannot trust anyone because it was imparted on them but it is so sweet to trust in Jesus now I took a DNA test and God is my father. If God is your father, then you are the richest person. All you need to just say, Abba Father. What when you are in problems, Abba Father. Because God is your father. Now the bride of Christ is born of his born, flesh of his flesh, DNA of his DNA, weight of his weight. We are God in flesh. We are born of his bone, we are united with him, we have the king's sword, we have his attributes. They were trying to f trace the looks of Christ from the, uh, that shoot of, of Turin there, trying to trace genetics. Now there are two genes, as, you, uh, as sure as your gene had to be in your father before your natural birth, your spiritual gene had to be in God before you were expressed of as his attributes, his thoughts, before the foundation of the world. There is no way around it. Now, genetics, the genes in you explain your predestination. Because you were in God before you were in flesh. So flesh cannot seal your destiny. The desires of the flesh cannot seal your destiny. Your mistakes you made in the flesh cannot cut you off when you were in God before you were in the flesh. You go back to what you were originally. Now, um, Acts chapter 17 verse 26 28 it says for in him we live and move and have our beings so we are the genes of God because we are in him and we live and move so spend time on things eternal on the inner man because the real you is the you in you the outer one will perish but though the outward man perisheth 
the inward man is renewed every day so in the in our outside we are imperfect we are mortal uh, there is a temptation and we, 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 it needs new birth but in our insights we are immortal sinless we live by the word only that we bypassed our theophany but we go back to god we unbypass it by the word of god because the soul has its own genetics you have the divine dna the royal blood flows in your soul like that slave in america he was a child of the king when they were taken as slaves he says this slavery situation does not change who i am because being a slave it didn't change his blood system even if you have nothing to eat it doesn't change the blood system of jesus in your life you are still a child of god so we want to awaken your divine dna awaken your supernatural gene and let it dominate in the affairs of your life so the scientists were uh, were asking about this gene that they say is god gene they say does the, our dna compel us to seek higher powers they were saying those who seem to believe have a special gene that is called gold gene i said now they are close to the truth because that explains predestination you you have something to believe with you you can't believe without something in you to believe with Amen. which is from god now in our family we cannot be so light in colors without nothing to be light with all of us are dark so we take our genetics if you see my child having chinese hair there is question is no miracle don't say praise god no there is a question you can't see me doing like the world because i can't there is someone in me controlling my life the god gene how faith is hard wires into our gene when things are dark when the year has been hard something says this is the best year that makes you unusual because that gene is not there in other people other people can be discouraged but you can't be discouraged other people can give up but there is something in you that cannot get tired now the bible says i reckon i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us so this glory is not going to be put in us it's already in us but it shall be revealed in us what is in you one day will show forth what is hidden and lying dormant in you one day will show forth there are dormant genes in the children of god that are ready to manifest when the time comes for the manifestation of sons of god as all nature is groaning waiting for the manifestation of the heavenly dna i was saying one day that uh, if you look from the book of revelation chapter 5 uh, onwards the writing of the book of revelation changes when that book appears from chapter 5 onwards almost every verse starts with end 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 if you check your bible throughout every verse will be starting with end 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 and if you reverse the word end you get dna that is a mystery of how god writes in a coded language that can only be picked by his children because we have this treasure in earthen vessels now the vessel cannot determine the content even if you look poor or miserable even if you have no house or anything what is in you is not judged by its cover in earthen vessels in fragile vessels we have the word of god in us john was told eat the book john so the, when he ate the book the book was now inside of him what is the the great mystery that was happening there in chapter 10 is that what was written of john was now inside him when the written word is now you have eaten it is now your operating system is now inside you dressing is now correct automatically because it's encoded from inside the word must not always be something that you are reading from outside but you must eat it and what is written is now in your blood system it now means even your dreams cannot be wrong because they are run by the word of god 
your thoughts will be wrong because they are run by the word of God. Even your marriage is now run because what is written is now inside you. When Christ was just 12 years, he took the book and he preached. He says, I must be by my father's business because genetics were burning like fire in his bones. You can't help but be what you sh you, you, your genetics say. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But when he shall appear, we shall be like him because genetics makes us like our father. Now, if you look at my son now, you may not guess, but one day you will have beard like me. Now, the Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, so that I don't sin against you. It means now the word is now inside. The operating is now inside. It's now Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. It's encoding your behavior. It goes now from inside to govern the eyes, to govern the ears, your feet. You don't touch the wrong thing because the word is running in the blood. Some people temper is running in the blood. Some people unbelief is running in the blood. But you as a child of God, the, you have the DNA gene of God that connects you with God. There is an invisible connection of DNA. That's why even Levi paid tithes before he was born. Because he was in Abraham. Meaning that when before we were born, we were in Christ. We overcame the devil when Christ overcame the devil. We did miracles when Christ did miracles because we, are, we were with him. We were identified with him. That's why we contend for the faith of our fathers. Not our natural fathers, the Nehandas and Zilikasis, but the fathers of faith that share the same spiritual gene with us. Now every person reflects outside what he is inside. You can't help but express what is in you, what is uh, programmed in you. Now you, you become a super race when you realize what is running in you. The son of man goes as it is written of him. Do you know also that your life will go as it is written? The written language called DNA. Um, maybe you may not understand the components of cytosine and guanine and uh, uh, all the other chemicals but there are also four major components or let's say three major components that build your spiritual DNA that is the word of God and the Holy Spirit and prayer those are the nucleotides of your DNA if you miss any of those your DNA collapses. Your spiritual fiber is built by the word, the cross, and prayer. And those are the nucleosides of it. Now, the law of reproduction says every seed must bring forth of its kind. So you as the bride of Christ, as you approach the headstone, you become a super church, a super race, as we are near the headstone, they shall be so much like him in his very image, in order to be united with him, they will be one and they will have the manifestation of the living word, they will have the very potentials of Christ. So, you, you know, a seed that is um, on the desk here, has potential to be a tree because of DNA that is inside. And you have potential to be a child of God. Do you know that the rapture potential is in you right now? The potential to change your body is already loaded in you now. You have potential to be healed, even if symptoms are on you, the potential is wired into you before the sickness came. So we have the attributes of God, we are the attribute sons of his spirit and uh, we have not yet entered the word, the word board form but we are these attributes and you will never be the word unless you were thought at the beginning that proves predestination of God you can't be the word unless you were in his thoughts and that's why other people cannot believe like you because that gene is not in them you can't do anything unless something is in you to be able to do that thing. 
Now we have a representation in heaven by heavenly genetics. He says like that woman at the well, though she was sinful in that current stage, she had a potential holiness. She was living a filthy life because of natural genetics. But when the light of his presence shone across her path, it activated a new set of genes. Maybe your life was evil up to now, but now the light is shining to activate a new set of genes that will override the alcohol genes, that will override the marijuana genes. Because when you are now in Christ, you don't act out and manufacture and try to, to do gymnastic, but you are by nature what is inside of you. That's why the prophet says, be original. Be just what God wants you to be. There is a kind of brother that God wants you to be. There is a kind of sister that God wants you to be. The one that will say, thy will be done. The will of God is the program and the DNA of God in you. So we are now activating the dormant genes. They are usually activated under stress. God can allow you to pass through trials and tribulations until you learn obedience from what you suffer. And then you, the, Timothy is told there to fan into flame the gift of God that is in him. So we are fanning into flame the inner potentials, the attributes of God. We are tabernacling deity and you are omnipotent in your spiritual genes. And when you allow those spiritual genes to govern even your natural ones, they will cause, they will remove bad inheritances. I say to myself that all bad traits that followed our family from generations and generations cannot continue in me. I'm praying that the Holy Ghost takes over in my children. You see, before they are born again, even if you love them, they will express one or two things of your anger before you were born again. But then when the word of God touches them, it erases all those evil things. So we have the divine nature. We are partakers of that divine nature of God. We are built to the stature of a perfect man. So now inside you nowadays, the books, the tapes, everything you need is in the books. When you are born, you know, when, you are con when there's conception, you are smaller than a grain of salt. But as you are smaller than a grain of salt, all you need to adult is already in you. In just, when you just get 23 chromosomes from here and from 23 from this side, it means all you need is already in you. When we get 23 from the Bible, 23 from the Spirit of God, all you need is already in you. When you get in mechanics and the dynamics, all you need in your journey is already in you. All you need to do is now to get the food and you keep pushing and you see this person is growing and shaping up. Things are now shaping up because you have the de genetics. Now you are spiritually programmed to do the master's wills. Now I'm programmed to wake up and pray. I can't, I can't even set my alarm. I'm spiritually programmed to pray for the suffering people. I'm spiritually programmed to spend much of my time on the word. Even when I'm, pre I'm, I'm seeing patients, I'll be not to be coming. You know, I get most of my notes when I'm busy at work. Things will be ratatting, coming. Because I'm, there is no off season, brother. I'm spiritual to be a contact of a blessing to somebody. We have the divine operating system to do the will of God. In other words, we have the mind of Christ. Let the mind that was in Christ be in you. It means you are now transformed. When you were born, you had the mind of your natural, sensual and everything running in you. But now you are now thinking the thoughts of Christ. And you are now going to behave the way Christ was going to behave in that situation. You are now going to respond the way Christ was going to respond to that situation. When they spit at you and you are Stephan, you are going to say, Father, forgive them. When they come into the tent and you are the prophet William Branham, then you will just say, Father, forgive them. When that genetics that was in, in Stephan, in the prophet, is in you, if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in you, it will also quicken your mortal body. It will affect even your natural. Now, you are God conscious within, you know, 
those who are not born of my father are not my father conscious Amen. they don't even know where he lives Amen. and they don't even know what he likes so in the spiritual those who are not born of God don't know the will of God Amen. they don't know the, the, what God desires in their life and the program of God that should run their lives but if you are born of God he runs your life entirely Monday, Tuesday, there is no off season but every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before you have come in contact with omnipotence and then when you do that you are in contact with the supernatural your life changes, your thinking changes, your mind changes you are made different, your sickness is finished God's great power moves in you are now connected the greatest power in the world is not the atomic bomb but a believer in contact with his maker so um the we, angelic beings associate together when you have the spirit of god uh, you are a candidate of association with angelic beings so our family associate together others are in Guero, others are in Harare, others are, but we are connected because of the family spirit that is with us or family blood now when Rahab was to be saved when Jericho was destroyed she was told to throw a scarlet thread there is a scarlet thread of DNA a strand of the presence of God to show that I'm no longer under the power of Babylon I'm no longer under the power of flesh I'm no longer under the power of sin I'm no longer under the rulers of darkness but I'm now under this scarlet, uh, this scarlet thread the DNA of God that's why the Bible says I'm fearfully and I'm wonderfully made you are, you are uh, not a cheap person you are unique no one can take your place your fingerprint is unique and your DNA is unique your DNA is your identity you are identified in the word of God you know when you do something and you, maybe you are stealing whatever even if you drop your piece of hair we can trace you by DNA but now spiritually if you are lost even if you are in the mighty K we can trust you by your DNA by the word of God and nothing can stop God's plan for your life now if you look at the keto that are thoroughbred that are pedigreed that you can trust their genetics they, they are very expensive this one went for 105,000 pounds because it's a thoroughbred cow this one went for 107 uh, 147,000 pounds because it's pure if your life is pure you are not cheap Amen. you are very expensive that's why the bible said ye shall keep my statutes and thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind god wanted purity even in our animals purity even in our music purity even in our dressing purity even in our thoughts purity even in everything our imaginations our dreams everything you touch even our business deals purity through and through now why a mule cannot reproduce and have babies is because it doesn't know whose father who its father is and who its mama is your mama is the word of god your father is the spirit of god quickening power now the devil knows that if he plays around with genetics he can um, cause the church to fail that's why god says keep the bloodline pure the purest bloodline is the jewish one they were told not to intermingle with anyone so the purest spiritual blood is the blood of the bride of christ now if you mix a zebra and a donkey you get a, a is, is it a zonkey? yes it's a zonkey <laughs> if you mix a lion and a tiger you get a liger those are mongrels a mongrel is something that cannot be spiritual trust what its original uh, father and mother and purest form is these days we have spiritual mongrels people who are message coastals <laughs> and they are costing us <laughs> if you you rather be a believer or an unbeliever in its purest form 
Don't be worthy. Don't be a chameleon Christian. Be a purest form of a believer. The prophet says, I would rather meet God as a sinner than as a hypocrite. But now there is a ladder of God's spiritual DNA that takes us higher and higher. We are climbing Jacob's ladder, a double strength ladder that takes us higher and higher. As you climb in prayer, as you climb higher in God, your sickness becomes nothing. What is happening down below becomes nothing. Now, I want us to zoom on the evil trends that are in our lives and we pluck them and break the cycles that are tormenting our families, that are tormenting our spiritual life because some people are born high passioned by natural genetic impartation. They are born as weak people who cannot pray by natural genetic impartation. But now we want to go to higher spiritual levels where we paralyze our passions of the flesh. Now each generation in breeding each other, you might be a Christian and your wife must, might be a Christian, but the genes of your body are still an inheritance from your father and your grandmother down on. That's why you must be careful. You may come here maybe angry because you, you, are, you have a problem of anger and people think that the Holy Ghost is rebuking people. When it's you who is angry that day, you must come here and say, Lord, remove all my traits. Let no human nature show. Do you know in the Old Testament, they will overlay this wood with gold so that no wood shows, but gold which shows the nature of God. So we must also be overlaid with the deity so that no human nature shows in the service of God. The prophet says, this man is born high passioned. He sees the modern striptease. He is constantly in trouble. When they are walking in streets, they are always in trouble because of the striptease. People are not wearing nicely. But now we want to cut off that portion that encodes for that bad behavior. That portion of your genes that causes you to last. That portion of your genes that makes you less to pray. That portion of your genes that make you not forgive. Now, the prophet talks about that boy who was German and uh, he had a nature, the whole family had a nature that they would just look at you and not greet you. And they were not going to apologize and we have many such people are like that. And he says, until he is regenerated and born again, I would advise that young man never to marry a woman. You will make hell on earth for her until that gentle, sweet, forgiving spirit of Christ comes in then that would be a paradox in itself be to, to have the very nature of the boy that's bred between the father and the mother yet in his intellectuals he's trying the best to come out of it there are many people in their intellectuals they are trying their best to overcome they are trying their best to quit things they are trying their best to quit evil things and imaginations but you can't use your intellectuals that are natural dna to overcome your natural DNA problem. You need a higher power to overcome your natural DNA. He can't do it. You will never overcome. Uh, Christ will have to overcome it. Let me tell you, as you are trying, that's good, but you will never be able until Christ takes over in your life and he does it for you. Then you will have already overcome then. It will be a perfect paradox when man is born of the Spirit of God. He says, then you know it's right. Um, the, you, the, they will just, it's not in them to ask for forgiveness or to ask for pardon. Maybe you are that boy here today. You can't say sorry. And the, your father was like that and your grandfather was like that. You can't even apologize. Now the genes of the father and of the mother of this boy, no matter how they are converted, still remains in the flesh of that boy, interbred out of this boy. Therefore the boy has got a complex in him. Like his mother's family, they are not forgiving and they are not going to apologize. That's where the boy stands. Where are you standing today? You must reject the natural traits to put you in slavery. No matter how the, you raised him up, now look at you out of your family all of them are drunks and they are fighting and shooting and cutting what makes it different today is a genetic impartation from heaven 
Look at your family, your, your mother. There are a bunch of people that sit there and they won't speak. They are independent. They are irrelevant. They can't even say, I mean, they will look at you and just say, all right, okay. There are people who are like that. But he says, you are the only one of all your sisters and brothers that are sweet, kind, forgiving. What does that? Uh, you are a tree, your family tree. Um, the thing that made you tender and sweet is the Holy Spirit. That's what changes you. Now, you may look at your genetic trends and the nature that, and the sin that is represented you, your weaknesses in the flesh, and say, Lord, I'm carrying the sword of the Spirit today to cut off those elements, to subdue them under the power of the Holy Ghost, to break all generational cases, to break all the trends that were running in our family, that from me, things will be different. From my children, things will be different. If all others were lustful, they were having, they were marrying many times, and they were uh, all of them were coming back from their marriage. There are families where they don't stay in marriage; they will all pack and come back. You find I followed another family where six of them in one generation yet packed and come back to marriage from marriage. They are slaves of their genes. Are you a slave of dirty genes? That's why you find that even in perversion, if your ancestors said this homosexual trend, it comes on you, lesbian, it comes on you, until you say, Lord, help me, and bring a heavenly impartation, you can then escape that evil DNA. You can expect escape now. Uh, it's up to us to break generational cases. When they say it runs in the family, you tell them, this is where it runs out <laughs> throughout the bible there are things that you must fight even if you look at abraham our father he had the flesh and abraham was very old he was 100 years when he got isaac and if you see his son isaac i think he was around 70 or 60 years when he got his son they struggled with the barrenness even Jacob, when he got Joseph, he was an old man. And you find Abraham as a good man, he lies. And then Isaac says the same lie that this is my sister. And it was running in the family. There are things that if you don't pray and cut them off and say, Lord, there is a scripture that says, that proverb, it says, the father, you have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set. It says that is no longer valid. The Bible says that proverb will never be used again. If my parents were poor, I'm going to be rich and bless them. If all our family members will never have no wedding, you shall have a wedding. If all of them could not go to university, you shall go to university. If all of them could not have the Holy Ghost, you shall have the Holy Ghost. If all of them could not overcome, you shall overcome. We are changing our genetic heritage, creating a new reality for ourselves and future generations. The generations after you must be thankful that there was a man who stood and broke these things. Amen. If temper ran through your ancestors, just sweeten your temper with prayer. Amen. Now you are asking yourself, how can I stop going back to sinful habits? It needs a transfusion. If it is in the blood to lie, there are some people who lie and lie, even if there is no danger, they lie. It's in the blood, it's a DNA that controls the mouth. It's the DNA that controls the eyes. It's the DNA that controls the mind. But there is a higher power that can change your genetics. When, when, when Jacob was tired of cheating, he went and he was left alone. Now, it's not a group thing to change your, your genetics. He rested with the men until the breaking of day. And God changed his name. He changed his destiny. He changed his way of work. He changed his nature. He, he was a changed man after that wrestling. And this evening, as we stand to our feet, you can be a changed man. It doesn't matter how long you have been in that situation. This week I was seeing the power of God. I was even talking to my wife that this week is, it has been so high. I, I think almost every person that I would pray for would come back in a few minutes to say it's done. Um, brother talent i know is listening now he was having tonsils and he just sent a message to me to say uh, lord uh, he says can you pray for me that the lord removes this uh, this pain this pain in the tonsils i just texted back to him to say i'm praying right now 
And within 15 minutes, he says those things, the pain stopped. He, say, he wrote in his language to say it best. I don't know what he felt when he said it best. He says, now I'm pain free right now. Another brother phones me from Harare. He says, we are going for an, for an operation. The child has a bad, serious hernia. I just text that I'm praying right now. When they go to hospital, the thing was so small. The doctor says, this thing is no longer, there is no need for an operation. And he writes to me that the child is discharged. Another brother sent me a message again and said, my mother is critically ill. When I just replied that I'm praying right now. He wrote back and said, I'm amazed that she is now so better. There is a power that was in Christ that is now in us. The same power that was operating in Galilee when Christ was walking, subduing. When Adam was on earth having, as a son of God, having dominion, controlling things, controlling nature, naming things. You have that same power and dominion to control the things in your life. Don't be a victim of circumstances when you have the power and the DNA of God. When you start knowing yourself and the amnesia goes, you start knowing the kind that you are, the DNA that we have. Like Elijah was a man of like passion and he said, it will not rain. And God made it not rain. You can say in my life, I will never have these spirits. I'm tired of them. And I'm crushing them. These habits, these natures, this power of the devil, I'm burying it. And it will never come back. You are free from your evil genetics, from lust of the eyes, from the pride of life. God can set you free by the power of his blood. It doesn't matter how long it has crushed your family until your family was down and it was adultery and the mischief all the way. You are the one who is setting them free because you are putting that family for a purpose to rewrite their story by the code of the DNA. Because what is written in us is the word of God and here is written that you shall be the head and not the tail. Here is written that you shall possess the gate of the enemy. It says what things whatever you desire when you pray you shall have them. So this evening as we all pray believe that is already done. Because there is something that is a deep calling to a deep that connects you to your father. Believe my brother that you shall overcome. Believe my sister that it's already done because God is on our side and who shall prevail against us if God is on our side. Reject all the natures of the flesh. Reject all your weaknesses and take your strength from a higher power and say, Lord, I bury all my weaknesses, all my failures, all the genealogical cases, all what followed my fathers and my mothers and my aunties. I'm not ruled by the spirits of Gogos and Kolos. I'm ruled by the spirit of the Holy Ghost. So if you are not getting married, you shall be married in the name of Jesus because of new genetic that says in blessing, I will bless you. You shall come out of that situation because of the power of God. No matter what the ancestors said, what the Nangas and the Sangomas said, you are above that because you are a daughter of the King. Our Heavenly Father, your children, are reaching out to a higher source of power to a high voltage of anointing to your presence they need a heavenly impartation they are rejecting their natures that are stubborn their natures of temper their natures of of heart stinginess they are rejecting father that nature that rejects your head we are rejecting father cycles of failure we are rejecting gen genetic impartation that is contrary to your word. We are saying, Father, we are wrestling with the angel now. Saying, Lord, change us. Without conversion, no one can overcome. Without your spirit coming, Peter was a high strung man. And he was cutting ears of people. But when he was in the upper room, something happened. The Holy Ghost took over. And he was never the same from there. Heavenly Father, I'm praying that your spirit will take over now. Those who are beating their wives, those who are rough to their wives, those who are rough to their children, those wives that are not submissive because it's a genetic trend in their family, they are failing to be submissive and to say sorry. They are now yielding to you, Lord Father, saying, Where is that crimson stream of blood? Where is that power that transforms, that changes the virus offender? 
that father the word of god changing you changing me changing everyone heavenly father may you transform us we yield ourselves there is a higher life there is a better nature there is a higher realm where we can overcome our past where we can overcome our weaknesses where we can overcome our inbred natures we can crush lust we can crush the habits of the flesh we can crush the sins that easily beset us by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let your anointing, Father, take over even online. Those who are praying, those who are seeking your presence, may you take over in their situations. Those marriages that were ruled by the traits of the woman and of the man, may they be ruled by your word, Father. Those ministries that were ruled by the moods of the pastor, by the natures of the pastors, may they be ruled by your Holy Spirit, detecting and pardoning and healing and rebuking and making your people in the stature of a perfect man. Father, we say, it's now, Father, that we invite you in our lives. We saw the family tree of Jonathan Edwards and the prosperity since he was a preacher of the gospel. We call that family prosperity and the trends of holiness, trends of victory to follow our children. You say this is the heritage of the children of God that no weapon formed against them can prosper. You said goodness and mercy shall follow us. We don't want to be followed by diabetes. We don't want asthma. We don't want epilepsy. We don't want Down syndrome in our families. We don't want spiritual amnesia in our churches. We don't want spiritual Down syndrome in our families. But Father, we want goodness and mercy to be partakers of that divine nature to have Christ in us, the hope of glory. May you take over, Father, those who are repenting, those who are making right, those who are confessing their sins, those who are saying, Father, I'm sorry. May you give them a spirit of adoption where they cry, Abba, Father. May they cry to you in their circumstances, in their situations. May they know that there is a God in heaven who rules in his family. It's called Jehovah because he dwells with his family. He cares for his own. He says we should cast all our cares on him because he cares for us. Father, all these summons and losses and failures and deaths that were following your children. We say, no, we don't want those things. It's not part of us as Christians. You said you rebuke the devourer. Our portion is what is written about us and our life shall go about what is written about us. The Bible says there shall be a church without spot or wrinkle. So we shall, through your grace, live a life without spot or wrinkle. Live a life without condemnation, above sin, above lust, above the cares of this world, above compromise. We shall make it because we are predestinated, because we have the heavenly DNA, because we have the nature of God. Heavenly Father, I see that your spirit is moving in this time and I pronounce every sick person to be healed. I pronounce everyone who was in bondage, who was bound by chains of evil genetic traits. Father, may they be set free. May your Holy Spirit overshadow them to bring a new creation. Because I'm a new creation now in Christ. The sins I used to do, I do them no more. May you create a new breed of sisters and brothers who live by your word, whose life will be styled by your word, who shall overcome against all oh, oh, they overcome the world. Because they are born of God, they shall rise and pray, they shall live according to the standard of the word. They will sacrifice their life and their time because of something in them that is calling high as a calling to a deep. May you bless your children now, Father. Answer their unspoken requests. Those who are saying the year is ending and I have my list. May you read their list, Father, and answer them according to their desires. And Father, we say we are ending the year in victories and in celebration because we know our God is able. Bless us, Father, as we come to the end of this service. May it never pass away from our memory, but may it leave a mark of holiness. May it leave a mark of victory that we shall remember. May all our chains be broken. May all evil traits be broken. And may it be a new dawn. I declare that in my family, I've cut all the trends that tormented our ancestors. 
and I decay and I apply the token for everyone as I bless them and for the church we apply the token to everyone that believe it may they be blessed in Jesus name Amen God bless you we have come to the end of this service just go and confess positively that it's already done now we'll sing as we dismiss the Lord be with you we'll have our next service on Friday online uh, in the evening and have a happy Christmas don't be too happy until you forget the word don't want to see drunk brothers drunk sisters but stay with the message God bless you we'll sing as we dismiss alright yeah, the engagement is today to stand up and sing a little song there's an engagement for brother Shing and Fundis Mandemo is here all right it's his birthday today and the engagement he was announced on Sunday his engagement is coming and our next wedding will be the wedding of Wilfred Ngata it will be in January so the engagement is today okay good now we will give us a good song as I shall call Fundis the tie I'll give you my necktie okay <laughs> um, brother Shingi right we'll call him and his bride to come and stand here as we shall bless them in engagement it is a blessing when you follow the ways of the Lord and he starts blessing you he's a hard working young man and um I believe the wedding will be here soon, right? Wow, I was calling Brother Mandemo, he has been very helpful in this. He has been helping a lot of young men to cross this dangerous bridge because there are many casualties in the bridge of marriage. Now I'll read our common scripture in Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 about engagement that Mary was exposed to Joseph and the angel says fear not to take Mary thy wife so after engagement there's no reverse courtship is there when you are doing checking your compatibility but after engagement there is no reverse you have vowed and you stay together so they are going to promise one another that if the Lord tarries, they are going to marry one another. That's why after engagement, it should be done very fast, the wedding. All right. My Bible is a new Bible. Let me quickly go to Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Can someone read it for me? Mine is no. This new Bible missed something. Can you check for me that the Bibles that we distributed have no Matthew chapter? Okay. There it is. <laughs> you will grow and be as old as I am. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When, the, when his mother Mary was exposed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. So, was exposed. That is engagement. So, they are going to give their promises to one another. 
and if they have a token the engagement ring you can bring it closer i don't think they can see you there maybe you stand here in front let's do things in the light <laughs> right you can. Huh? all right let's pull the pulpit behind no i can't do it <laughs> okay all right you can help <laughs> thanks right i think other boys and girls are admiring what is happening here and it's coming to you <laughs> right you can put the ring here these rings are made by men so we have to sanctify them in prayer let us pray our heavenly father we thank you for this token a very beautiful ring as a sign of their love that is unending father we pray as we are preaching against these genetic things that affect your children negatively we pray that your heavenly gene will rule in their affair lord may the holy spirit overshadow them and guide them and direct them in paths of righteousness that they will never fail in christianity in their walk that they will never compromise but father they will hold the standards of the message bless this ring as they are token of love in jesus name amen god bless you there is the engagement ring put it in the finger now let him give him a mic so that he can say his vows and then we hear if you accept what you do with the ring mm. there is the promise straight to the point hitting where it matters Abigail is now a big girl so she will answer back she doesn't need the mother to answer now and you are now a big girl <laughs> that's good yeah I was sleeping the time is gone but we want to rejoice before I, uh, Mandemo comes to pray for them and commit them to the Lord. But we want to just rejoice. This is good. Now, we will limit the... But there are too few. Let's quickly... The song is short. You run through qu quickly. Let's rejoice with them. Remember, wear your mask. Don't hug. Wonderful, wonderful.
Varia Mepot in Gassimuka. Vavira, what you are to Gamira, Scapam Chatoavo? You are to Gamira, who pays a passer of a good tanga. At Chatar Sitching Machun, as a barbaro, when you know a Tungamira Gumchato, Varuba Fazi, Panigachi Gazirira. Joseph, not do what no apa, no drawakum is a committee in Mimoga, the Mimuno, the Queen. We thank the Lord for that. They may be seated. They can start going now to plan for wedding. I believe we we are closing the year with a lot of weddings. We want to say congrats to Emmanuel who waited this Saturday and to Tawonga who waited also. Emmanuel was on the 22nd and um, Joseph and Hannah 22nd. Tawonga was on Saturday. It's an outbreak of wedding. God bless you. Till we meet again. Amen.